give God praise. Come on. Come on and bless him. Let the world know he's not dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You had to fight. He's not dead. Praise God. Somebody, somebody prayed. And, and Chris made it. Don't know where he came from, but... He came just in time, didn't he? My car died on me on my way to church. Hallelujah. Let's pray for him. He said his car died on him on the way to church. But they didn't need you for the other songs. They needed you for this one. So God knew what he was doing. He's, he's an on-time God, isn't he? <laughs> hey. Ma, 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 ma. Hey, yeah. Ah, glory, glory, glory. My God. Everyone standing, everyone standing, wherever you are, all over the building. Come stand with us. I know that's right. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory. Hallelujah. All day today. Amen. All day today, it's about him. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn we, with me to... The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16. Let me just say to you, every gospel speaks to the resurrection of our Christ. But Mark is my choice today. I like his rendering of the text. you got to get out of John. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, verse 1, chapter 16, married the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe and a white robe sitting on the right side. 
They were alarmed. Don't be afraid, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. Got good news for you. He has risen. He's not here. But see the place where they laid him. I want you to look at it and examine it. But go. Tell the disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anybody because they were afraid. The other, you know, you can read on, share some others. Hey Amen. I'm going to stop right there, and uh, we, we, we're going we're going to deal with that. Uh, and I just want to talk to us from Matthew. I mean, Mark's rendering of the text. Matthew talks about it. Luke talks about it as well. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, and from this subject, thank God, the rock road. Thank God, the rock road. Amen. Amen. And so when somebody asks you, why you go, why you go to Easter Sunday service? Tell them, because the rock road. Yeah. Why are you calling on his name all the time? <laughs> Tell him because the rock road. Why are you happy and you don't have any reason to be happy? <laughs> Tell him because the, the rock road. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless and breathe on your word. Help us to make it clear and plain that we might be the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Let me expound upon the text just a little bit as we look at this subject matter and this narrative in, in Mark's rendering of, of the resurrection of our Christ. It was dark as, as they arose that Sunday morning, y'all. They got up and put on their garments, grabbed their spices, and headed out on a dark road that led out of the city. And as they walked up the path toward the tomb, they had been there. They had been there when Jesus rode on the colt before thousands shouting his praises. Wow, what a difference a day make. They saw Jesus tied to a post of the cross as the Romans scourged, filled with broken pieces of pottery, glass and bones ripping across his back. As they recalled the purple robe, the beatings, the mocking, and the crown of thorns, they had seen it all. They had seen Jesus, their teacher, their friend, their Lord, they had witnessed everything that Jesus went through. These two women, these two women, these two Marys, Mary Magdala or Mary Magdalene, one of the most mentioned women of the followers of Jesus Christ, and then the Mary, uh, the mother of James, were there at the cross. They were right there. They've been there all the time. They saw Jesus hanging there on that rough cross of wood, y'all. They saw his body struggling and wince with pain. And with every breath he took, they saw him and heard him. They were there when Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? They saw his head falling as he cried, it is finished. They were there when Jesus died, and when he died, they died too. Yes, they were still alive physically, but their hopes and joy died on that cross with Jesus. On that dark Friday, I said on that dark Friday, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Lord was dead. 
and their hopes were gone. The question, church, so, so what are they doing up so early on this Sunday morning? What was it that drove them from their beds before dawn and put them on a dark uphill climb? When you know who Jesus is to you, no hour is too early to do what you need to do for him. I just said something. <laughs> I said, when you know who Jesus is to, to you, no hour, it's too early or too late for you to do what you need to do for him. Which gives me an opportunity to plug, amen, we're, we're praying again on Saturday. I said, we're praying again on Saturday. Want to see your name on the list. <laughs> So we're praying again, all, amen, 10, from 10 a.m. to 2 on Saturday. No hour, no hour should be too early or too late for you to spend time with him. Well, the thing that drove them was their love for and devotion to Jesus. For some of us, we ought to be driven by our love and devotion to him. Anybody love him today? I said, anybody love him today? Well, they were on assignment. Let the church say assignment. And how I many you know that everybody has an assignment in life? I don't know what yours is. But everybody has assignment. I don't know whether you've asked the Lord recently and asked him on your knees, what's my assignment for, for life? Another word for assignment is purpose. What's my purpose for, for life? What's my calling for, for life? They were on their assignment. They were on their purpose. They were engaging in their calling. Someone, watch this, had to prepare the body for burial. And no one else had volunteered. <laughs> Peter didn't. James didn't, John didn't, Dion didn't, Lonnie didn't, amen, amen, Greenfield didn't, nobody else had volunteered, these, these, these ladies, amen, they, they, they volunteered to prepare his bodies, and sometimes, y'all, it's, it's, it's up to you to do it. Can I can help some? I said, sometimes it's up to you to do it. Sometimes nobody else is going to volunteer. Sometimes it's up to you to sing. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it's up to you to pray. Sometimes it's up to you to teach. Sometimes it's up to you to help. Sometimes it's up to you to open the door. Sometimes it's up to, up to you to speak peace. Sometimes it's up to you to show love. Sometimes it's up to you to speak truth to power. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes it's up to you to take the hit. Amen. Understand that every now and then, somebody has to step up and do it. Am I talking to anybody up in here? And so we celebrate their example, church. We celebrate their example. They would be the ones who would wipe the blood from his brow, amen, from his legs and from his side. They would be the ones to cleanse the blood from the body of Jesus. They would be the one to wipe the blood from his beard, his matted beard. They would be the ones, the last ones, to touch his face and to close his eyes. They would be the ones. Mary had been at the tomb early that morning. She was in deep distress. She had a problem, y'all. She had a problem. Not with the other Mary. She didn't have a problem with the disciples. She didn't even have a problem with the soldiers. She didn't have a problem with Pilate. But she had a problem with the rock. Do I have a witness here? I said she had a problem with the rock. The rock was her problem. That rock that sealed the tomb it stood between her and her Lord. Come by here to tell somebody you ought to have a problem with anything that stands between you and your Lord. I don't care who they are and where they come from. You ought to have a problem with anybody and anything that stands between you and your Lord. 
Help me somebody. That's probably one of the times where you have the right to be indignant. Amen. And tell them to move up out of your way. Amen. If they're standing between you and your, your Lord. Do I have a witness here? I know. I hear you. I hear you talking. I hear you. I know that's, that's, that's hard for some of y'all because you love your wife, you love your husband, and you love your children. Well, but I've come by to tell you nothing between me and my Savior. Nothing between me and my, my Savior. Amen. For her, that rock meant the end of the Christ that had changed her life. The rock. The feeling was that, that I can't go on without him. And how many of you know that you ought to be so into Christ that you feel as though you can't go on without him? Do I have a witness here? That means that there will be a period in time in your life where you just kind of, amen, uh, not programmed, but you yell out his name and his praises. Sometimes some folks in church don't say nothing unless they're programmed. Y'all looking at me strange. What, what do you mean program? Program, hit B flat. Amen, Johnny, B flat. But, when you, hit the, when you hit the right chord, just hit, hit a chord. When the right chord hits, then y'all shout out. Do I have a witness here? When Chris raised his arms the right way, that we shout out. But how many know that there ought to be a time where you're not programmed? You're, you're not programmed because you love him so much. Amen. And you can't do without him because of what he's done in your life and how he changed your life. Do I have a witness here? You ought to have, be, amen, all of a sudden, impromptu, yell out his name and shout praises unto, just like, just like, amen, can I preach just like Reverend Cook did when, when the, amen, the song was playing, even before they got to the point, he said, he ain't there. He just saw an opening in the tomb. He, he began to, yeah, he ain't there. Do I have a witness here? That's what God is looking for. They were on assignment. They were on assignment. Amen. You can imagine Mary was thinking, how can we get inside to, amen, to Jesus if the stone is in the way? And as they were making their way there, according to Mark, Mark says the women were worried as to how and who would roll or move the rock. Had the rock not moved, allowing them access to go in and do what was their custom of, for families to do, amen, amen, for the dead, their dreams and hopes would be dashed. I can imagine they were probably thinking that that ancient text in Daniel chapter 6 verses 15 through 17 where it says then the men went you remember this is the narrative of when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den amen and the king the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him remember your majesty that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed so the king gave the order that they might, amen, they brought Daniel and threw him in the lion's den. And the king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. Can you say, with his arrogance. He's, then they, watch this, then they, a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his signet ring and with the ring his, and his, of his nobles so that Daniel, watch this, here it is so that Daniel's situation might not be changed do I have a witness here? can you see it? that's what they did on Calvary they put a rock up in the mouth of the cave and they sealed it so that Jesus' situation might not be changed do I have a witness? come here come here and if the rock had not moved his situation would not have changed. Do I have a witness? If the stone was not rolled away, Jesus would be like any other religious leader. Everything he said would be a lie. Jesus would not have changed the direction of humanity. And he would not be God if the rock had not rolled. But thank God, the rock rolled. Help me preach. <laughs> Amen. I said, thank God, the rock 
the rock road you you can imagine you can imagine the thinking of mary how can we get inside praise god that the rock rolled mary asked the question amen when she got there and saw that the rock was was gone who rolled the rock but i'm i'm not asking who amen i'm asking for whom was it rolled moved not who but for whom was it moved for for jesus or was it moved for mary can I just say it, it? It makes sense, amen, to our little finite mind. How else was, was he going to get out of the tomb, amen? The rock needed to roll. I said it needed to roll. We, all of us were surmised that it needed to roll, but, but why was the stone rolled away? And for who was the stone rolled away? For what purpose, amen, was the rolling of, of the rock? Was it rolled away from, for Jesus? Amen. You know the answer to that. No, he don't need it. Amen. How many of you know that he didn't have to roll the rock for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, 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 he's Jesus. Do I have a witness here? And he's just literally letting them go through your, your, your antics and you do what you need to do. I've already told them, amen. I told them if, if I die th in three days, I'm getting up out of here. And so whatever happens, I'm, I'm getting up. And so, so the rock did not roll for Jesus because he's so much God. Do I have a witness here? He's so much God, you can't keep him down. Church, the Bible tells us that he was already gone. Somebody said he's already gone. The angel said to, to them, I know what you're looking for. I know who you're looking for. He's not here. He's not here. Can I tell you, the risen son of God doesn't need anybody and anyone to help him in his life situation. He can get out of it all by himself. But I thank God that the rock rolled. God wanted, amen, everyone to understand the impact of the resurrection. That's why the rock rolled. He wanted them to understand the impact of the resurrection, leave the tomb sealed, and there would be no hope. But roll the rock away, show an empty tomb, a missing body, amen, and stun guards, and that's hope that he had been resurrected. So church, tell somebody on your way home, here it is, when the rock rolled, it was a defining moment. Amen. Well, let me put it in this term. It was an aha moment. Let the church say aha. But what is an aha moment? Aha moment is a sudden realization, inspiration, insight, recognition, and comprehension. An aha moment is when something does, when someone does something that reveals their true personality. Do I have a witness here? I'm wondering this morning, is anybody here, amen, that can raise their hand? I've had some aha moments that when he's revealed his true personality in my life I didn't know what was going to happen I didn't know how I was going to get out of this amen but I had an aha moment God showed up in the nick of time I wish I had two or three more witnesses on this side that said yes I've had some aha moments amen I've had some aha moments in my life well what does that mean Pastor Jones it gives hope to possibility it means I have confidence in the possibility that things will work out in my favor because the rock road is possible to be down in the morning and up before the end of the day amen because the rock road it's possible you can start out last and end up first do I have a witness here amen it's possible to be in despair one minute and have joy the next moment but why because the rock road is possible to be born in a low place and ascend to a high place it's possible to be counted out and yet be counted in it's possible to be in a dark place but yet have a bright future it's possible amen that your good days will outweigh your help me somebody it's possible to take a wrong turn and end up in a good place is there anybody up in here amen that know what i'm talking about it's possible and so he gives life to possibilities in our life it's possible i said it's possible it's possible amen he can change your life so who was the stone rolled away for it was a rolled away for the women so that they could see that the tomb was empty that's the essence amen of our narrative i'll talk here that the 
the stone, the rock road, the empty tomb, and what it meant for them and what it means for us even today. And the rock road. Jesus did not need a rock. Amen. That rock was just there for decoration. Because the rock can't hold Jesus. Can't, nothing can't hold him in. Isn't it wonderful to know that a rock can't hold him in? I'm getting ready to shout you on this one. Amen. You have to understand that even your messed up, dirty life can't hold him in. I don't care what you do. I don't care how bad you stink up the place. Do I have a witness here? You can't hold him in from getting to you. Somebody say, I know that's right because he got to me. I was low down dirty. <laughs> Amen. Didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't know where I was going to go. I was so messed up. I didn't know my name. But how many of you know that that didn't hold him in? I said that didn't hold him in. He found his way. Amen. To get to me. And the rock rolled. Somebody said, and the rock rolled. Ah, oh, praise God. From what? And so, so they never did understand the rock. They didn't understand how the rock rolled. And how it rolled away. And sometimes, church, you don't need to major in trying to understand everything. Songwriter says, we'll understand it better. <laughs> By in. So how many of you know that if, if you walk away from the accident, car accident, that totaled your car, you may not totally understand how or why. You're just glad you're alive. <laughs> Do I have a witness? So I'll come back and tell somebody, stop trying to understand everything. Some things you're not going to understand. Matthew tells us, and so I'm, I'm getting ready to close here. They had, they had joy. They had joy. Now the women had joy because the rock rolled. Joy because the rock of despair had been ro rolled away. And there was a chance that they had, hey, amen, they would see Jesus again. What started out as a terrible day has suddenly changed into a day filled with inexpressible joy church because the rock road they didn't start out well but because the rock road it ended on a high note by the close of the day they had hope and so the rock rolling meant something it meant that christ was alive that's what you want to hold on to the rock road it meant that christ was alive he then calls the two women together he says come here come here he says he calls them to a ministry of evangelism. He says them in verse 7, he says, but go. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Tell the disciples and Peter. And that got me. Why wouldn't you just say tell the disciples? And then say and, and Peter. Well, he recognized and he re understands the Peter had some history, y'all. He, he had some history. And he said, he said and, and Peter and, and, and the two Marys were, were not the only ones who had hated the rock when it sealed the tomb. Watch this. The rock rolled because someone else needed hope. So, so look, watch this, church. Rock meant something to Peter. See, the rock stood outside that tomb as a testimony to the fact that Peter had failed. The rock was a monument to his betrayal of Christ. The rock reminded him of his inadequacies and his failures. And in his mind, he probably blamed himself for Christ's death. But go tell disciples and Peter. We got some Peters here. He was tired, depressed, and an angry fisherman. Peter, 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 the one. Peter's the one with the foot mouth. I said, he's the one with the foot mouth. That's they labeled him because he was always putting his foot in his mouth. We got some folks like him. Always saying stuff that they don't. Always want to have the last. Always think that their opinion matters. I, I, I ain't trying to mess with nobody. And so, so when somebody comes at you that way, change their name. 
You tell them if you keep talking, I'm getting ready to change your name. What are you going to change? Your name is Peter. <laughs> because if you keep on talking, you're going to put your foot in your mouth. Do I have a witness here? And so, so listen, look. But I've come by to tell you, I've got good news for you. Just like Jesus loved Peter, <laughs> he also loves you. That's why he said, and Peter. Because he knew we'd have some Peters. Amen. In Washington, D.C. And in the DMV. Peter needed some hope too, y'all. This is significant because, amen, if he could forgive Peter, that means he can forgive you and me. And so like Peter, who, who, who many of us who have failed need hope. People who have sinned need hope. People who said the wrong thing need hope need hope. Peter, Peter heard, heard the news. The news made possible by a rock being rolled away. And so if that rock never moved, Peter would have never had a chance of a new lease on life. He would have carried that heartache and what could have been for the rest of his life. And so it is in our lives. I'm almost done, y'all. If God rolled, the rock, if that rock had never moved, Think about your life. You would have never experienced what it's like to be born again. If that rock had not moved, you'd never experience peace that surpasses all understanding. If that rock had not rolled, then you wouldn't know anything about joy coming in the morning. If that rock had not rolled, Jesus doing, amen, above and beyond what you can think or ask would have never shown up in your life. But I'm glad that the rock rolled. Do I have a witness here? Because if that rock had not rolled, there'd be no foundation on which to stand. Because on Christ, the solid rock, somewhere in your Bible, it said there was a man that was sitting on the tomb. And, amen, people have been trying to find out who was that man. <laughs> Do I have a witness that was sitting in white on that tomb? Amen. But I've come by to tell you, if the rock had not rolled, we wouldn't have no foundation. The winds of adversity would have blown you down and would have taken you out. If the rock had not a road, according to Amen Paul in 1 Corinthians, we'd have no faith. If the rock had not a road, our preaching would be in vain. If the rock had not a road, your faith would be in vain. If the rock had not a road, amen, you would be a false witness. And so stop testifying of the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. There would be no forgiveness. There would be no future. But I stopped by to tell you, the rock rolled. I said the rock rolled that Sunday morning. And he got up with all power in his hand. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, thank God that the rock rolled. And because the rock rolled, I can face tomorrow. Because the rock rolled, amen. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I'm his very own. And the joy that we share, none other has ever known. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Thank God that the rock rolled. Yes. 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 Thank God the rock The road, the road. It gets better than that, y'all. For those of you who are great believers, the house you live in, the job that you have, the health that you enjoy, 
It's all because the rock roll. Oh, let's go help somebody. Let's go help somebody. This is not a prosperity sermon. But when you drive up a new, in a new car and somebody asks you, how did you get it? <laughs> You're going to tell them, Jesus. <laughs> You get that job that you've been waiting and looking for. So how did you do that? You tell your children that in school and college, when they walk across that stage. Tell them they made it because the... So when you go, to, you go home this evening, you look at your wife, look at your children, look at what your tears all start flowing down your cheeks and say, you have what you have. Because now that you've looked at everything and everybody else, you go look in the mirror <laughs> and look at yourself. Tell God I see me. <laughs> and the only reason why I see me is because because I should be dead. I'm done. I'm done. Come on. Everyone stand up. Just wanted to give you something to hold on to for the rest of the week. So that when you talk to friends and family and others about Resurrection Sunday, Passion Week, Resurrection Monday, tell them it's all because the rock rolled. Man, woman, boy, or girl, you're here today. Life eternal is yours. Life is, life is yours in the balcony on the main floor. You've not given your life to Christ. You're here. You're not in church. You don't have a covering. You don't have a pastor. Wow. How many of you know that this would be a good day to give your life to Christ? It'd be a good day to make a pledge to the Lord's people to be a disciple of Christ, to follow him in church membership. This would be a good day. Watch this. To turn your life around. It would be a good day. Who will be the first that will step out and say, yes, preacher. It wasn't my intent to come on Resurrection Sunday. But since I'm here, you might as well get what God had for you. He planned this day just for you. Listen, I can't walk for you, but I will walk with you. If you lift your hand, I'll come to where you are. I'll come down and walk with you down this aisle. That's how important it is. For you to yield and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Man, woman, boy, your girl. You need Christ. You need a church. You need a covering. Come on. Come on. Make. This is an opportunity to be real. And And say yes to his will and yes to his way. Come on. Come on, brothers. Come on, sisters, wherever you are. Here it is. Maybe you're here and says, Preacher, I'm not quite sure what I need to do. Would you pray with me? So I want you to come down. I want to pray with you right here. Come on, make your way. If you're not a believer, you're not in church, you don't have a church, come on, I want you to tell the person next to you, excuse me. 
I can at least go down for prayer. I, I need, I need prayer. Come on, come on. I need to make a decision. Not quite sure what decision that is. Come on, come on. Let's pray together. In the balcony, on the main floor. Come on, sis. Victory. Come on, come on, come on. There's others of you that... the Lord let's pray together let's pray together we'll wait on you come on come on make your way any others let me ask you a question do you believe God Yeah. the only reason why I'm asking that because some of you I feel you in my spirit you're a little hesitant you want him to move out for you but you won't move out for him C come on and all I ask you to do is come for prayer we just you know you're not where you need to be let's pray about it let's please pray about it Come on, come on. 30 more seconds and we're going to move into prayer. Come on, I see your couples. I see your families. If, if, the, if your family's going to stay together, it's, it's going to require you stepping out of your comfort zone. And believing the word of God that if we pray about it together God will stand with us in it all right let's believe together father in the name of Jesus we love you God we thank you for our time thank you for these who are here we pray your blessings upon each and every one of them I pray God that you will speak to every need every concern I pray, God, that you would go above and beyond for someone. Somebody at the altar is hurting real bad. They didn't want to say anything, didn't want to do anything. We had to push to bring them down to the, to the altar. But, God, would you just intervene right now? Would you deal with what's going on in their hearts, in their minds, in their life, in their homes, on their jobs? I pray right now, God, that... You would dispatch angels to cover them. We thank you, God. We know that you do all things well. And so because of that, God, we lay it before you. We give it to you. We surrender. We will surrender all, all to thee. We freely give. We give it to you, God. Pray that you would have your way in, in our lives. There are a multiplicity of things at the altar, God. Too many to number or to call out, but you know all of them. You are so much God that you won't get confused with who needs what and how you need to handle their situations. And so God, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus. In that name that's above every name. In that name, God, where demons tremble at the sound of your name. That your name will be on the lips of everyone under the sound of my voice. That they would call on you, God for whatever that need might be if it's a provider food God they call on your name you you're the bread of life God if it's water God may they call on your name you can give them living waters where they'll thirst no more father in the name of Jesus God if it's friend you said you'd be a friend to the brotherless and you'll stick closer than a brother father we 
thank you and we praise you that you can be mother and father you can be any and everything to them I pray right now that you would be that and they would reach up and grab you right now and cause you to be with them father we bless you and we thank you I feel you moving right now in somebody's life may they receive it right now according to your word and according to your spirit bless them God bless them God bless their walk bless their decision making bless their minds heal their bodies help them to make good decisions in Jesus name hear our prayer God forgive us of our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness in that wonderful name we say amen amen, amen and amen. amen go believing that God has already answered your prayer hallelujah remain standing wherever you are amen to to all of our families we we have gifts for children for all of the children amen if you take them to the lower fellowship hall once I give the benediction, we want to give your child a gift, all right? And so receive that on behalf of the Pilgrim Baptist Church. Praise God. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we bless you for our time. We pray that you were pleased with our gathering today and that we said something that was instrumental and helpful to every hearer in the house and we pray God that that which we receive will not return void empower us that we might impact a world that we live in now may the grace and the love and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may that spirit rest rule and abide with all of us henceforth now and forevermore and all the people of God said Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. See you next Sunday.